Hello fellow Unreal Engine artists, designers and developers and welcome to another video on how to use my Simple Structures plugin. The link is in the description below. So today we're going to talk about a few hints and tips on how to use the Landscape Deformer. Let's talk about how you can soften and smooth out the landscape deformations with the blur parameters. So let me start off by creating a landscape deformation. I'll go into landscape mode and I'll select the blueprints and the landscape deformer and then click on the landscape. Click on a quick refresh to take my spline points up and I can come out of landscape mode now so I can see more of the area here. So let's just drag this up slightly and what I'll do is I'll make it a long um, line with a couple of extra spline points in it. So go over to the shape here. I'll choose line, make it 10,000 long and then let's just add two more spline points, one here, one here and let's just move them around slightly. So I'll move that over to the back and I'll move the other one forward. And what you'll notice here is that the uh, landscape deformation, I mean this is a very thin width here, uh, is kind of um, slightly unnatural looking. It's got a very sharp edge here um, and you'll notice that especially with landscapes with low resolution you get a lot of triangulation on those edges. So the blur tool is there to help you soften those edges and it should be used in conjunction with the angle and the base width. So if you think of the angle and base width as um, interacting in order to create the size of the deformation and the fall off of the deformation, the blur is your third tool in shaping that. So let's um, quickly just try it out. So click on blur shape. Nothing much happens because the blur size is very low, but let's put that up to five and you can see that it's created a much more natural ending to the edge here. So it's more like a mound rather than a crisp edge. Uh, let's change some of the other settings here as well. Let's change the fall off angle to 50 and you can see that elongates here. Let's change the base width 2000. So it's in fact, let's not, it's not so much as that. Let's do 1000 there. And now what happens if we uh, up the blur size? So maybe make the blur size 10. And you can see that that is creating a little bit more sort of uh, not randomization, but a little bit more smoothness on those edges there. And you can go um, further. Let's go up to 20. You can see that it's completely smoothed out now. So if we raise the deformation up here, you are start, starting to now get into the realms of small hills. So the combination of fall off angle, base width and blur enables you to create quite a few different elements here. And blur is really useful as well when you're dealing with uh, enclosed shapes, if you want to create sort of uh, flat areas. Uh, so um, experiment with that and um, have fun using the blur tool just to smooth out those edges. I just want to make you aware of a small issue when you're dealing with high elevations or low valleys with the landscape deformer. So I've got a landscape here where I've got a high plateau. Um, I've got the landscape deformer set in my um, landscape and let's just click to add it in here and let's uh, drag it up slightly here. What you'll notice is that the gizmo for selecting it has moved all the way up here. And that's because the, and this, this landscape's got scaling as well. That's because the landscape deformer will always ensure that the deformation is happening on or near the surface. When you're in high elevations or low valleys, the root position 
has to has to go up or down relative to this in order to make that shape in the right place. I'm going to look at this and see if I can resolve this in a future version. Uh, everything works fine. It's just that you have to be aware. Let's, um, for example, if I focus in on this one here, let's use F to focus. Say I wanted to move this one around here. I've selected it and I'm thinking, OK, where are the where's the handle to move this around? Well, it's up there in the air and with very low resolutions or sorry, low elevations, it might be below the surface as well. So I can still move it all around, but just be aware that it may disappear. Your spline points are still going to be here just above the surface. So that's all good from a point of view of moving things around. So don't worry about that, but just for um, for moving the whole deformation, just be aware that it may be up in the air. You may remember from an earlier video on room hints and tips that rooms have to be on a flat surface in order for the stairs and roof to work properly. So the problem is if you have a landscape, even with slight undulations here, let's drag the room in here. Uh, it looks OK, but as soon as I generate the roof, you can see that the roof is not level with the top of the room. So what we can do is, let's just delete this. What we can do is use the landscape deformer to create plateaus, not just for rooms, but maybe for whole um, villages as well, selections of rooms. So let me show you how to do that. Pretty straightforward. Let's go into landscape mode. Let's select our landscape deformer and put one in the landscape here, come out of landscape mode so we can see a bit more what's going on. And what we'll do is we'll select this and change the shape to actually, let's just do this rectangle for shape change. And let's um, just raise it up slightly. So you remember from the previous hint that the handle can sometimes be up slightly. So let's just raise it up. You can also sink it into the ground as well. And now what we want to do is we want to increase the width of this so that it fills in the space. So let's change the base width to something like 2000. And we could even go more than that, let's say 3000. There we go. And let's make it curved as well, just because we can. And now we can change the base width even more. And now we have a flat surface. So you can associate a structure with this plateau, or you can just put one directly on there. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, if you associate it, then it is going to be this shape. Um, so we might not want to do that. So let's go back here, drag a room in here, and you can see that now this is a flat surface. When we put the roof on, it's perfectly level there. And we can increase that um, size of that landscape deformer here in order to uh, incorporate a whole raft of uh, rooms. So let's change the base width here to 10,000. And let's move it along slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it just so it goes into this plateau here. So you can see that it is leveling everything around it. So it's raising the elevation here and it's even carving slightly into this hill here. The angle of this is depending that it carves into is depending on the fall off angle. So if we make the fall off angle 50. You can see that we now have a smoother fall off here and a smoother slope here. And now we can add other rooms here to our heart's content. And we know that they will all be level so that the roofs and the staircases will work. So that's how to create plateaus in your landscape in order to ensure a level surface. I want to talk about the angles of your landscape deformer and how they affect nearby mountains or valleys. So here I've created a uh, plateau with a wall on and I want this to be a sort of a defensive position in this mountain. So I'm going to select that and uh, the handle is just up here slightly. So let's move this into the nearby mountain here. So I'm going to put it in here, 
maybe raise it up slightly um, let's just do a refresh on this so that the wall is in the right place and what you can see is that the um, landscape is carved into depending on the angle here so at the moment it's a quite a sharp angle but if I change the fall off angle of this landscape deformer to something like 40 you can see that that is really eating into a lot of that mountain so the takeaway from this is if, if you don't want your mountain to be carved too much make sure you use sharper angles here so 60 70 and if you're seeing artifacts in the landscape because of the resolution like here as triangles I can use the blur shape here and up the blur and that will start to remove some of those elements there so you need to do a combination of the fall off angle and the blur shape in order to get what you want let's um, have a look at a similar thing if you're in a valley so let's turn that blur shape off let's select the landscape here what I'll do is I'll go into quick construction mode so I can move it more more quickly and now what I'll do is I'll move it over to this valley so I'm going to put it here on the edge of the valley let's switch quick construction mode back off and you can see that that is again a sharp angle there I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sink it down slightly so it's just underneath the surface and then we will have to do a refresh just to get everything in the right place um, and again now just be aware of those angles so at the moment this is uh, going down into the valley and not affecting it too much but if I change that to something wide like 30 you can see that it is having a big impact on the surrounding area um, and probably looks slightly unnatural so just remember probably use sharper angles when you're near hills and valleys in order to um, make your landscape deformer fit into the landscape and if necessary use the blur shape as well just to uh, get rid of any artifacts around the last thing I want to talk about today is painting textures automatically on your landscape deformer using the paint layer settings and I'll talk a bit about the extra parameters that are provided in that section so if you've got a landscape deformer selected in your landscape you've got these paint layer target settings uh, this will only work if you do have paint layers in your landscape material so to check that go into landscape mode go to the paint layer and you can see here depending on what your landscape material is you will have layers here and you'll know if they work or not because if I select one of these I can draw with it so I've got a sand layer here and I've also got a rock layer here that I can paint on and um, I've got an auto material as well which is what is doing the slope so I could use either the sand or the rock layer in my landscape deformer or a combination of both so let's um, show you the parameters so let's start off by adding in a sand layer here so I'm going to select the deformer and add into that and you just have to give it the same name as the paint layer so let's start off with sand and you can see that immediately it has created a sand texture following the spline shape of the landscape deformer but if you open up this uh, section here you can see there's a few different parameters here so to start off with the two main things are the width and the edge offset uh, let me just remove the tiling first of all I'll talk about that in a second so actually these two are really just added together there's no particular need to use the edge offset if I make this zero and make the edge offset 500 it has the same effect so what I would do is I would probably just use the fall off width um, I think maybe the edge offset is slightly uh, more uh, sharp so probably fall off width is your best bet for deciding how wide you want that to be and you can go way out you can go um, right out into the 
slopes and the rest of the landscape. So that is the main uh, width of the texture. Uh, then you have these elements to do with um, texture uh, mapping and noise. So you can see by default it's set it to this tiling noise. So what you can do that is you can use that to break up the texture. So at the moment I have the uh, texture tiling set to zero here. And if I increase that tiling up to say 10, or, and then I'll probably have to um, change the texture influence here as well up to one. And you can see what it's doing is it's breaking up the texture with noise. So texture influence can go up higher than one. So you can go up to here and start to get splotches of noise there. And obviously now if you change the tiling, if I make the tiling one, it's a very large noise texture. If I make something like 20, it's a very small tiling texture. So you can play around with the uh, texture for noise. You can play around with the tiling to get the spread of noise that you want. And then if you then increase the width, you'll get the noise tiling going, spreading out away from the center points of the spline. And the final thing you can do here is the final opacity here. Um, if it's zero, it's invisible. One is fully visible. So if you want it to be slightly faded, you could do 0.5 to uh, maybe reduce the impact of the texture there. But I'll, I'll put it back to one. So those are the main settings within the paint layer. You don't have to have just one paint layer. You could have multiple ones. So I could add another one now here. So now maybe I'll use my rock layer. So I want to create a path through this uh, splotchy sand. So I'll do a rock layer here. And for this one, I'll reduce the texture um, influence to zero because I want a straight line. And if I change the opacity, so you can only just see it here, let's change that up to five and make the width 200. I start to just have a path. In fact, let's put the opacity up to 10. There you go. So you can see that I now have a rock texture that goes through the center of there with sand that is use, use the noise texture to spread it around. So have fun playing around with that. The paint layer textures in the Deformer tool, great for texturing. And I could see um, using something like runtime virtual textures. So if you put something like a road on here or some other element, you could then paint the texture and then use runtime virtual textures to blend that in with your road or wall. So uh, have fun. Okay, that's the end of today's video, but stay subscribed as we will be covering more hints and tips on how to use this plugin in future videos. See you in the next one. Bye for now.